Firm's expansion path. Um, suppose you have uh, Q is equal to KL. Okay. This is your uh, production function with you. What is the MRTS L for K in this case? It is given out to be MPL by MPK. This is the ratio of marginal product of labor to marginal product of capital. What is the marginal product of labor here? That is del Q by del L upon what is marginal product of capital? Del Q by del K. Okay. That would be minus del Q by del L would be Y minus. Right now there is no need for minus K by L. Hmm. And uh, suppose W is the wage rate, R is the rental rate of capital. Okay. So your cost minimizing input combination would be at a point where W by R is equal to K by L. Fine. So given your given your Q which is equal to KL I can write this as instead of Q I can uh, in, instead of K here I can write L W by R equals to K I can write this Q equals to L W by R into L huh? Now, further suppose W by R is equal to 1 by 1, which is equal to 1. And you want to produce, say, 10 units of Q. So 10 would be equal to L into W by R, which is 1, into L, which is L square equals to 10. Fine. So L is equal to root of 10. What is K equals to then? W by R into L, which is 1 into root of 10, which is again root of 10. So K is also equal to root of 10. Fine. So what happens is, what happens is when you want to produce, you, you want to produce when Q is equal to 10, uh, and your input choice, input prices are same. That is one one. Your input, your cost minimizing input choices are uh, are uh, root ten, root ten. So this is what you have got. Fine. And in case if you want to find the isocost line, you can also find that. That is C is equal to W L plus R K. Okay. But when W and R, they are both equal to 1, so it is just equal to L plus K. C equals to L plus K. Hmm. So supposedly, for a given level of uh, W and R, supposedly initially this is my isocos line. Fine. And corresponding to this, this is my isoquant, which is producing Q equals to 10. And corresponding to this, I have the amount of labor and capital with me. So here my labor is equal to root 10 and my capital is also equal to root 10. Now supposedly what happens is that I want to produce a higher amount of Q. Say Q equals to 20. Fine. Everything else is unchanged. Everything else is unchanged. But I want to produce Q equals to 20. Fine. So what will happen is that at Q equals to 20. Supposedly here my Q is equal to 20. But I know this that Q is equal to L W by R into L according to all this formulation 
Now I want to produce Q equals to 20. So that would be L square into 1 because W by R is 1. So L is equal to root of 20. Similarly, you can also prove that K is equal to root of 20. So when you want to produce Q equals to 20 at the same input prices 1, 1, your cost minimizing input choices became root of 20, root of 20. Okay. What will happen is that the your ISO cost line it will go out fine um, or should I say that see for example you have uh, you have uh, you have initially you have C is equal to WL plus RK fine so I'll write here C equals to WL plus RK clear I can write this as C minus WL equals to rk i can also write this as k equals to c by r minus w by r l fine now i know this that my w by r is unchanged fine my w by r is unchanged so k is equal to c minus l because R is 1, W by R is 1, so K is equal to C minus L, fine. And in case if I want to produce root of 20, K as K and L as 20, so my C actually has to be equal to 2 root 20, fine. In case when my K was equal to root 10, it was root 10 minus is equal to c minus root 10 so in that case my c was 2 root 10 fine so my iso cost line was basically 2 root 10 is equal to l plus k now in this case my iso cost line is 2 root 20 is equal to l plus k fine now this line will shift parallelly to this point and corresponding to this line, I have an input choice, which is Q equals to 20. Fine. Now, both of these corresponding to this, this is my Q equal. Let me just write it with this, this, at this point. At this point, the amount of amount of labor is root of 20 amount of capital is also root of 20 okay both of these this e1 and e2 they are the input uh, cost minimizing input choices okay for a given level of q now in case if you join these two together you get what is known as firm's expansion path fine so for each q this firm's expansion path, it finds the input choices that minimizes the cost of producing Q. If input choice, if input costs, they remain constant for all amounts, we can easily trace out this locus of cost minimizing choices. Okay, so this is your firm's expansion path. Generally, you will assume that this is an upward sloping firm's expansion path. Okay, uh, but it is not necessarily so in case if one of the factor is inferior then you would after a certain point you would want to consume less of that factor fine but we're not going to talk about it right now this is the firm's expansion path firm's expansion path is what does firm do firm wants to minimize its cost okay to produce a given level of q it needs to find out the cost minimizing bundles for each level of q when the input prices are unchanged and you trace them okay your and input prices are unchanged and you find the cost minimizing input choices for each level of q and then join them together what you get is firm's expansion path 